All right, hello and welcome back to a software engineer plays uh, back in human resource machine today. Um, we'll jump right in. We'll keep going up the left side here. Um, into the next level here, level 24, mod module. Uh, so the title of this room makes me think we're going to be talking or dealing with um, modular arithmetic or the modulo operator. Um, I did talk briefly about the modulo operator in um, the last video, Fibonacci Visitor, because one of the solutions that I implemented in actual code used the mod operator. Um, basically, you can think of the mod operator in its simplest term as the remainder of a division problem. So let's say you had uh, two into five, five divided by two. Um, your result is two remainder one, um, which, so t uh, five mod two is one because the remainder of that division problem is one. Anyway, let's jump in and see if uh, we have to implement modulo here. How many hours of work can you fit into one day? Some would say 24, others would say 40, who knows, let's see, not enough. Okay. Alright, there's always a sad remainder of unworked hours. Good thing we have these optional night shifts to cram in more. Okay. Okay, so... We don't have to worry about negative numbers, that's a nice thing, because modulo gets interesting with negative numbers, but, um... It looks like we have to compute the remainder of the operation of dividing the second number into the first. So, in the case of these two numbers, we have 9 and 2. Um, so, 9 mod 2 is going to be the remainder of 9 divided by 2. Um, which in this case would be 1, because 9 divided by 2 is 4 remainder 1. So I think what we're going to have to do here, first and... Well, obviously we need to get numbers from the inbox. I'm going to go ahead and copy to 0, and then get second, uh, second and copy to 1 here. So this will be... Um, call it A, this will be B, um, and then we want to, wait, we have B in our hands now, and we basically just want to subtract from A until we have a negative number, um, and once we get a negative number, we know that we have a, a negative or zero. Um, we'll know that we've reached the end of the, the loop condition, so... Let's see, we want to subtract, we want to pick up A and subtract B from it, so copy from A and subtract B. So let's just double check to make sure that's working correctly. Good so far. Good. Get a set. That's... That is to be expected. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and copy it back to A, and then we can jump up to there. So this will continue, but now the important thing is... Um, We want to... I mean, this isn't going to be optimal because we're going to end up with two jumps here, but we will see if there's a way we can rework the logic so that it's um, going the other way around. Uh, actually, I'm remembering the way we did the Fibonacci problem is instead of subtracting the smaller number from the bigger number, we just ended up going the other way around. So let's try that, because I think that'll let us... Um, so instead, of, we don't need the copy from A anymore. We can just subtract A. And then, I don't know where we're going to want to copy that to. We'll copy that to a new spot for now. Called 
result. And then if it is a negative number, we want to loop again. Um, I think. We're going to need a copy from in here. Well, let's see what happens. Alright, we get 6, we get 2, we subtract A, and we get a negative 4, we subtract A again, get a negative 10, okay, so something <laughs> is not quite right here. We don't want to subtract, uh, we want to pick up, um, oh boy, we want to keep a record of, um, We want to keep a record of 4 here, not negative 4. Unless we start adding B after this fact here. Um, so... So the question I'm running into now is how do we keep track of our our four? Because if we have a negative four and we try and subtract six from it, we'll end up with negative ten like we did here. And we're just gonna keep going in this circle. There's no there's no way to tell that we've reached the end, basically. Because we do need to um, subtract a from, or we need to subtract B from A to keep a record of 4, so... <clears throat> Let's see if we can uh, build that in here. I still want to have this logic here because it saves us the two jump steps. I don't know if that'll actually save us time in the long run, but um, we'll find out here. Uh... I don't think it will, because we're going to end up having extra steps in here to do this map anyway. So let's go ahead and do what we were doing before. We'll copy from A, we'll subtract B. If it's zero, or if it's negative, we'll jump out, otherwise we will jump back to the top. Okay. So, we store six, we store two. We pick up the 6, we subtract the 2, we get 4, and we store it. The number we have is not 0 and it's not negative. So we're going to do it again. Pick up 2. It's not negative. Okay, we get a 0, we store it. So now it is 0, so we want to send that to the outbox. So we'll go ahead and put the outbox there. Now if it's negative, we need to add back the number that we um, copied. So we want to add B and then move it to the outbox. And the reason for that is if you had like, in this example, 7 and 4, you're going to subtract 4 from it and get 3. You're going to subtract 4 from 3 and get negative 1. Now that's negative, but 7 mod 4 is 3 because 7 divided by 4 is 1 remainder 3. So you need to add back the 4 that we subtracted to get the, the correct number, the, um, the 3 there. So that should now work. So I think this is a fully working program. Let's see if, if it does work as we expect. We've got 7. We've got 4. So things get interesting now. Pick up the 7, subtract the 4, get 3. It is not zero and it's not negative, so we go back and we do it again. Okay. Four. Uh, and we end up with a negative one. So this is negative, and because it's negative, we need to add four. And now we can send that to the outbox. Okay. Good deal. And one thing I'm noticing, we may be able to increase the speed by moving this jump down one step. 
because A will be in our hands after we execute step 7 here, so we don't need to copy from A again every time through this loop. Um, so that's something we may be able to do to speed things up. Now 7 mod 3, uh, I would expect to get an answer of 1 here, because 7 divided by 3 is 2 remainder 1. So let's see what happens. We get 4. Now this is where I was talking about we might be able to spe speed up a little bit, because we do not need to copy from A, because we've already got 4 in our hands. You see that? So this step is unnecessary every iteration through the loop. Now we subtract 3, we get 1, we have to do it all over again, jump up to the loop, unnecessary copy from, subtract that, now we get a negative number. So we're going to copy it, and because it's negative, we add B again, get a value of 1, and outbox it. So that seems to be working. And now we'll do, this is going to be an interesting example, because 2 divided by 7 is 0, uh, with a remainder of 7, so let's see if it accepts our output here. We should get... Okay, so yes. 2 divided by 7 is 0 with a remainder of 2, so that's, that's expected. Now 0 divided by 7 is going to be 0. And there should be no remainder. And it accepted our input. Good deal. So how do we do? Okay, 13 commands. Not too bad, and a little bit over time. So let me see if that one changing that position of that jump we talked about earlier speeds it up. So we have 69 steps now. If I move this down here, speed him up. So if it was 69, and now it is 65. So we saved on average four commands there. So not bad. Let's see, is there anything we can do here? Uh, are any of these commands unnecessary? Uh, we need two inboxes. We gotta copy from A, and then we gotta start subtracting B. Do we need to copy to A every time? Maybe not. Maybe we don't need to keep a record. Let's find out. Okay. Three. Okay, yes, so we didn't need to keep a record there. So that saved us our block, and now we've hit the size, um, size requirement. Having that copy 2 in there was kind of nice to see the process happening, but it wasn't really necessary. So now we've checked this box. Which is good. Oh, and we checked that box too. Awesome. Well, fantastic. Uh, so, really cool little program there to um, introduce the concept of modular arithmetic. Um, modular arithmetic is something that's really useful in computer science. Um, if you're doing something where you want to do Basically, I mean, I use it all the time at work if I'm doing something a lot of times and I want to update a progress for, uh, meter every hundred steps or something, I can say if my iterator mod 100 equals zero, then update my progress meter. It's really useful for checking if a number is even, because any number mod 2, if the answer uh, is zero, that means it's even, because any even number divided by 2 will have no remainder, right? Um, so it's very useful for checking if a number is odd or even. Uh, if you are laying things out in a grid, um, so you had 25 items in an array, and you wanted to lay it out in a 5x5 five five grid, you can use the modulo uh, operator to 
um, find out which position in the array you are and display things in a grid. It's super useful and it's super cool to really be able to uh, show you how it works in these building blocks like this. So modular arithmetic, super cool stuff. Also a lot of implications in cryptography. Um, that's probably a, a larger field that I want to try and discuss in the last couple of minutes of this video, but um, mod modular arithmetic is hugely important when it comes to cryptography and computing um, symmetric keys and other things which keep your data safe as you are sending things back and forth over the internet, as you're logging into YouTube to watch this video. Uh, modular arithmetic was used to make sure that your data was safe and wasn't going to be intercepted and decrypted by some bad actors. So modular arithmetic gets a big thumbs up from me. Uh, if you liked this content, I would appreciate it if you gave the video a big thumbs up, uh, <laughs> hit the like button, maybe consider subscribing, and um, share with a friend, share with two friends, share with however many friends you like. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Uh, and, um, yeah, go out there and do some modular arithmetic. All right, bye.